Welcome back to the Art of Boat Building. Join us as Bob finishes the mast, cleans up the bronze mast partner, and test fits the mast into the boat. If you're enjoying this series, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and like this video as it helps in promoting the channel. And of course, a special thanks to the Patreon members who lend their financial support. If you're not a member yet, please consider joining. Your help is greatly appreciated. I made a discovery about storing varnish. So this less varnish needs to be reduced uh, 50%. And when I was out at the boat show, I was took my varnish along to put some touch up on Victoria. So that was nearly four months ago. And the to save the 50-50 um, mix, I put it in a water bottle that I had. So this is the water bottle and I have not touched it since. And you can see that the varnish has not skimmed over or anything. Um, so I don't know, I mean, I wasn't necessarily careful about squeezing the air out of it. It was sealed very well because I didn't want it to spill when I was in transport. But it seems like it's really a good method to uh, store the 50-50 mix for the varnish. Uh, other times when I've done it, I've always gotten a skim over it, even kept in like a mason jar or something like that. Um, so I don't quite know why it worked, other than I think that it was sealed well, but I'm going to continue to keep the 50-50 mix in a water bottle like this. I had mentioned earlier that the varnish needs to be reduced by 50% with thinner. The less varnish right out of the can is quite thick, almost like maple syrup. The 50% mix is recommended by Total Boat so that it will penetrate the bare wood properly. It's my experience to continue with the 50% mix in the additional coats. I believe that many thin coats build up a very deep, lustrous surface. When using a foam brush and reduced varnish, it dries slower, making it easier to feather the brush strokes, and as it dries, it levels out to a beautiful, smooth finish. Well, I've got seven coats of varnish on the mast at this point, and you can see it's just starting to get a little bit of a luster to it. I like to get a minimum of eight coats, like especially on a soft wood like spruce. So I'm gonna put one more coat of varnish on there. But first I'm going to take some 320 sandpaper and just give it a light scuffing and then uh, get that final coat on there. On these final coats, you really don't need very much varnish on your brush because it doesn't soak in hardly at all. And one of the things about a round object like a mast is it's almost impossible not to get drips. So I always come along and really try to catch any drips that might be there and level them out. Well, while the mast is drying, I'll get started cleaning up the mast partner, which I'll need in order to get the mast stood up inside of the boat. Here's the casting out of, straight out of the mold, and you can see it's in pretty good shape. Of course, I've cut off the um, big chunks, the sprues and the cup. Uh, so this, I need to do some cleanup on it. Of course, this goes in here, and then it will open and close. So I'll need to clean off uh, some of these spots that have um, where the uh, vent or gate was on there. Uh, I've got some little dimples in here where the 
holes need to be drilled. So I'm going to get these cleaned up in the way that I've finished the other bronzes and get those holes drilled in there. After drilling a pilot hole, I switched the bit to a letter F drill bit, which is just seven thousandths larger than a quarter of an inch so that the pin will slide in there nicely. I then drilled the appropriate size hole and countersunk the bronze so that it will accept a number 14 screw. After some final cleanup and flattening, I was ready for assembly. I've got the two pieces to the mass partner all finished up now, and they will go together like that. Now they're going to be attached here with some uh, clevis pins and I have a clevis pin here that will go in like so and then it gets a uh, hairpin cotter on here like that. Uh, the problem is is that this is uh, mild steel it's just galvanized. Uh, I've looked around for some stainless ones uh, what I'd really prefer is that it be bronze um, they're very hard to find. So I decided I would try to make one. A few months ago, I had a surface sander that I put up for sale on a Facebook marketplace. And I had a fellow contact me and say, was I interested in trading? And I said, well, what do you have? And he listed several tools, and one of them was a mini lathe. Uh, I've always been curious about having a metal lathe at my disposal all the time, so it seemed like it was a good thing to trade for. And in fact, the cost of one of these lathes is far more than I ever had paid for that sander. So it seemed like a good investment. Now it's a Harbor Freight uh, mini lathe, and you know it doesn't do anything super complicated, but I think it'll be really handy for some small projects. So a small project like making a clevis pin seems like a really good first thing to do. So that's what I'm going to do is to make a little clevis pin. Now I have a piece of bronze rod here. <coughs> and this is 3 8 rod. And the head of the clevis pin is 3 8 of an inch. So what I need to do is to save part of that and then turn it down to a quarter of an inch, which is the size of the holes that I had drilled in the uh, mass partner. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cut off a piece of this and then we'll get started turning a new clevis pin for my mass partner.
So I've got the two pins made. Let me show you how this goes together. You simply slide in here. I've got a couple of hairpin cutters to fit on there. So there we are, all finished up. So now the next step is to get it installed on the boat. Well, now that I've got the mass partner all installed, I wanted to attach the gooseneck, which attaches the boom to the mass. I mainly want to do that so that once I stand it up, I can also test to make sure that the boom fits on there properly. So the plans show that the gooseneck should be located uh, 38 inches, and you can see here where it's 25 plus 13, which equals 38. So what I'm going to do is to measure from the bottom up 38 inches. So it says that in the plans that the gooseneck needs to be, the bottom of it needs to be 38 inches. So I'm going to locate it right there, get some screws in there and get that fastened. So over here on sheet five, it shows a diagram for the boom crutch. Um, you can see that it needs to be 5 eighths inch thick, uh, inch and a half in the center. And when I scale this off, which is uh, one and a half inches equals one foot, that this dimension here should be three inches. Uh, and you can see it needs to be 30 inches long. So we'll go find a piece of wood. 
Well, I didn't have any oak that was the exact uh, dimensions that I needed, but I found this really beautiful piece of ash that was the offcut from when I made the tiller. So actually the fact that it'll be next to the tiller I think would be um, a nice choice. So this piece is actually a little thicker than I needed. It's an inch and a half and I only need five eighths. So I'll need to resaw that down. But it turns out that if I have an inch and a half here and that it moves up that I'll have three inches up here for that top of the crutch. So I'm gonna get it all drawn out on here first and then get it all cut to size. On the plans, it shows that at the bottom here that the um, boom crutch is slightly tapered. And it says to adjust it uh, to fit the fitting accordingly. Uh, so right now I've got a little bit of a taper on there. And you can see it doesn't go in very far. So what I'm going to do is leave it like that until I get the boom attached to the mast and make sure that it all sets parallel to the boat. And then I will adjust this taper accordingly. So I'm ready to start setting up the mast in the boat and see if it fits. Uh, believe it or not, the ceiling in the shop here is still not high enough to accommodate a 16-foot mast inside. So fortunately, the mast, which sits about right here, is about a foot or so in front of the cradle wheels. So my plan is to push the boat outside of the studio so that the cradle stays inside on the concrete floor and then that the bow will stick out far enough that I'm able to stand the mast up. So I'm going to give that a try. I shortened the boom crutch about two inches and then put a longer taper on it. Everything seems to fit the way it should. It fits down into the mast step really well. The next item was to shorten the center board with the rounded end to mirror the mast.
where everything seems to fit as it should, which I must say really pleases me. Well, that's all we have time for in this episode. So as always, thanks for watching. And remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.